Hey guys, it's Lynn. Welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new, welcome. So in today's video, I thought I would do something different. I would just sit down and talk to you about something that it's very important for me and hopefully it will help someone who's watching or maybe you know someone who's dealing with these problems and hopefully I will make you feel that you're not alone if you're dealing with this because this is something that I have been dealing with for eight years. Depression, anxiety and eating disorders. And for me it's very hard to sit down here and film. I'm not sure if I'm ready but I will try my best to speak about it and hopefully I won't cry. I'm afraid I was kind of battling between doing it, not doing it, doing it. And now I've decided to just sit down and go for it. So it has been a lot of hauls and makeup tutorials and therefore I thought it would be the perfect opportunity just to talk to you guys. So if you see me look down to the side, it's because I have my viewfinder and I also wrote down some notes on what I want to say. So I'm sure I will be speaking about everything that I had in mind to talk about. But yeah, let's just start and go with the flow. So for me, this is a very, very important subject because I know that there is so many people dealing with mental problems in 2016 and it's only getting more and more. And I know that people are afraid to speak about these problems because they're afraid of how people will react, how people will judge them because I feel like mental problems are not talked about at all, almost. It is so hard to speak about problems like that because people who have never dealt with anything like it will try to understand you, but they won't actually. Or at least that's how I feel it when I have tried to talk to someone about it. They have been, yeah, but you're so pretty. Why are you so upset? You have so many friends, you have beautiful clothes, blah, blah, blah. So in the end of the day, it isn't about that at all. So I can have how many clothes I want, but that won't make me happy at all. And I think that the most wrong people do is that they judge a mental problem like depression different than a flu because a flu is a disease and so is depression as well. People should see that a disease is a disease no matter what the disease is because people in my opinion tend to judge you differently if you have a mental problem instead of if you have a regular physical disease which is so sad for me and it's so important to think about that we all probably know someone who has a mental disease without telling you because they are afraid it could be someone at your school someone at work and i know that i look like a very happy person but i have dealt with so many things you guys for the past eight years i've had depression i have had eating disorder, I have had anxiety, and I have felt terrible. But the best thing to think at that point is that even if it's very hard right now, and even if it's terrible, everything is dark, you don't want to do anything, it will get better. But it would take a lot of time and it would take a lot of practice and it's only you people can tell you what to do how to think but that doesn't change anything if you don't change the way you think and change the way you look at things and that is probably the hardest thing so my story started when i was in eighth grade i got bullied a lot girls were so mean to me they were speaking behind my back laughing and I was called fat and I didn't have the nicest clothes and all the things that girls tend to do to each other happened to me. So I changed school three times before I was 16 because of the bullying and girls were so mean to me. I barely had any friends at school and I felt so alone, but I was afraid to tell anyone about it because I was afraid of how people would react. 
So I held everything inside for probably four years before I told my family that I've reached rock bottom. I can't do this anymore. I'm not happy. I don't want to live. I was even that depressed that I thought about ending my life. And oh, it's so hard to speak about this. But yeah, so I decided one day that it's enough. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I've had enough. I can't do it. And especially I can't do it alone. So I've decided to speak to my family about it and I started to see a therapist. But it took probably almost a year before I was able to live like a normal person, to go out and have fun. And it was so hard. I was, yeah, I don't even recognize myself when I see at all photos and stuff because I was so depressed and I felt like that was it. That was the end. I didn't want to do this anymore. And it's so sad that bullying, even now, it's probably more online cyberbullying than it is like girls coming up to you, telling you that you're not worth living and you look like a trash. So I haven't gotten bullied since probably 11th grade, I think. That was the end because I moved away. I moved to New York and I started to study fashion and design and I had a blast over there. Everything was great. And then I came back home and my life suddenly fell apart again. I think it's all the memories you have when you walk around and I started to see another therapist at that point and I didn't like her, we didn't have any chemistry, mm -hmm. so things actually got worse at that point. So I was depressed again and I, I started to have social anxiety. So I didn't want to speak to anyone and I'm still that person at school. I sit at the front row, I take notes, I listen to the teacher, I'm the nicest person, I don't say anything and I walk away. And that started in a, when I came back from New York, my social anxiety got very, very, very high. I was sad, I was lonely, and I felt like nobody understood me and nobody wanted to talk to me, nobody wanted to be my friends, because that is how it feels. And if you are not familiar with depression or anxiety, you would probably not understand. You can try to understand, of course, but the best thing to do is to speak with someone who has experienced the same things because they will understand in a different level. I took small steps, like very, very small steps all the time to find things that made me happy. And I started to work out and I started to blog again because I felt like I wanted to do that. I love to blog and now I have YouTube as well and it's amazing. And so the worst thing you can do is to hold it inside of you and not speak to anyone and kind of distance yourself from the world. And I know because I did that myself and it only made it worse because the tension is building and building and building and when you reach that high point, everything would just fall apart and you will get heartbroken. Like it would hurt so bad. So my tip number one, if you're dealing with these kinds of problems, please speak to someone about it. It can be a nurse at school. It can be a parent. It can be a friend. It can be even me. If you feel like contacting me to get some tips and tricks, or if you just want to speak with someone, my email is in the description box. So feel free to contact me at any time because I would love to speak with you. If you have any questions or anything, I'm here for you guys. And so after I went to that therapist and I didn't feel any chemistry, anything, I didn't feel like she understood me. And I got even more and more depressed because I quit and I had to handle it by myself. And I was still at that point not like open-minded and I didn't speak 
about these kinds of problem with anyone because I felt like I was weird. I felt like I was a different person and I felt like no, nobody will understand me and why should people want it to be my friend when I am dealing with these kinds of problems? I'm a freak. That was the thing that I thought. So I also got a lot of comments um, on my body which made me stop eating and I was over exercising so I wanted to be better I wanted to be skinnier I wanted to be more beautiful and I was struggling so bad it took all the time I couldn't go out without makeup I couldn't go out without my best clothes I was obsessed about not getting attention like bad attention from people like I felt like if I go out without makeup, people will look at me and they will think, oh my god, she's so ugly. So I started to always wear the best clothes and always have makeup on so people would, wouldn't would like look at me and think that I was ugly. So. It is very hard and I know that it's only getting harder for those out there, especially the bullying, cyberbullying and everything like that is, it's hard and I know it because I've been there and it is not something I wish upon anyone. I don't even wish my worst enemy to feel the way that I've felt. Yeah, at that point, I started to compare myself with others. I was always like, oh, she's so happy. She has the best life. And why do I have so much negative stuff in my life? And that is the worst thing you can do as well. You should never compare yourself to someone else because you never know what they are struggling with, how, how, what they're dealing with, how their life is. Every person has something going on in their life and it's not up to us to judge anyone and we never know it could be our next door neighbor having huge problems and she looks so happy but we don't know about it because people don't speak about these things and also about comparing yourself to others you don't see that person for who they really are because you can't tell how someone is by their looks and that is also something very important. Like you can compare yourself with, oh, she has beautiful hair and stuff like that. But at the end, it only comes down to their personality and how they feel inside because you should never compare yourself to someone and feel bad about it because you never know what they're dealing with and you never know if they even have it worse. So be positive to every new person you meet. I know it's very hard. People can go out the door and you can think they have the most perfect life ever, but mostly it's not true because we can dress a certain way, we can look a certain way, we can speak a certain way, but at the moment you come home and you close the door, the tears are all over your face, even if people think you're happy. Uh, so. It's very important to speak about it, as I said, and don't hold anything inside of you and don't think that you're weird or different because you're not. We are all here for a reason and we all have an ability to be something great if we just believe we can do something great. And we all can be everything we want to be and we can all meet a perfect boyfriend because we don't want the same things which makes us special beings and we sure are special you are special and you from today can start to change your life if you also change how you think and how you look at people and how you look at yourself my self-esteem was zero like I had no self-esteem at all and I still am struggling with how I look at myself and how I think people think about me but I'm improving every day to be a better person and to be a better person for myself and it's only me that can change like nobody else can help you it's only you against you and you should live for you because you are the last and only person 
who truly are there at the end. So after about seven years, I started to feel better again and I got a boyfriend and my life turned around. I got great grades. I started to study again to get into med school because I dropped out of high school because of my depression and I started to get my life back together. I was starting to building something for myself, to building a life and the life that I wanted. And I worked so hard to become the person that I wanted to become. And if you saw my last Real Talk With Me video, you know that my fiance and I broke it off last year and my best friend also died. And that was the breaking point for me. I was feeling happy and my life was going great. And then that happened and it ruined me. And she went away like that. Just in a second, I spoke to her at the evening and two days later she was dead. It happened so suddenly and I didn't understand. I still don't quite understand because she was the most beautiful person ever and she was always happy and smiling and bringing everyone together. So life is so unfair and the pain and emptiness that I felt inside broke me back again. So about a year ago, I had my first panic attack ever. I've never had it before. And I was laying in bed um, at night and I was watching TV and I felt happy. But suddenly I got warm in all my body and my heart just started pumping and pumping and pumping. And... Then I got very cold and I lost feelings in my whole body. It was numb. I couldn't move anything. And I seriously thought that I was going to die. It was the worst, worst feeling ever. So it was about four in the morning and I was so afraid that I actually jumped out the window and I lay down out on the grass for about 30 minutes. I didn't know anything, like I was okay. Now, this is my final moment, I'm going to die and there's no one here that can help me. And I knew that I had three exams coming up and it was a very hectic period of my time. I've just lost my boyfriend and my friend and the school was overloading with work. Yeah. I felt like I was going to die. It's serious. If you've never had panic attacks, you probably would think I'm crazy, but that is actually how it feels. And that is such a weird feeling, but it happened that one time. And I thought, okay, I should go to the doctor and see if it's something wrong with me. So I went and he told me that I had post-traumatic stress and also panic attack and anxiety and I thought no it has to be something more serious because this is not a regular anxiety anxiety doesn't make you feel like this and I was totally sure that it was something very wrong with me but after a while I started to think that it's probably not because it went away and then when I went to Denmark with my family I started to have panic attacks again. Like the whole week we were away, my heart was pumping and I felt dizzy. It was like I wasn't in my body, even if I was. It was such a weird experience. And when we came back home, it disappeared for almost four or five months. And right before Christmas, when it was my exam again, and I studied for probably 12 hours a day. I was barely eating, I was barely sleeping. It started up again. And after that, I've had it like every single week almost. And that's why I'm not always posting on Thursdays because this is actually taking a lot of my time. 
So if you're dealing with anxiety and panic attacks and social anxiety or any kind of anxiety where you feel your heart pumping, your head, like your head is going to explode, your body get numb, you get cold, you get warm, you freeze again, just know that it's all in your head. So after having to deal with these problems for myself, I've started to kind of all the time think about it. Like this could happen, this could happen. What if I do that, then that could happen. Oh my God, my heart is starting to acting up. And I'm only focusing on that instead of just trying to change the outlook. The past months I have now figure out that I need to change how I think and change how I act and also change my reaction on my thoughts. As a person, we have many thousand thoughts a day and it's the only the negative thoughts that we like, oh, there is a negative thought, let's put it in my collection. And you put out these thoughts and you focus everything on those thoughts instead of focusing on the happy thoughts and the positive things in life and it could be so hard to change that if you have experienced something in the past and if you have dealt with depression anxiety or eating disorders and all that stuff it really changed who you are and it actually makes you a lot stronger person even if you don't think you are a strong person the things that happens in the past make us the persons we are today so it has made me a lot stronger and I now know how to deal with things and I've now changed the way I look at the world and at my friends and also how I look at myself it can be very hard and of course not every day is great and of course I'm not happy all the time but I'm taking baby steps one step at a time and just know that you're not alone in this world and that you will get better you will get a lot better everything will be great and your life will be amazing as well so don't forget to speak about these kinds of problems and also don't hate the past like don't think about the past and don't lay awake at night thinking oh what if that didn't happen then I would be a lot more happier if he didn't do that I will have had a better life don't think like that because the past is over it's gone and there's nothing you can do about it the only thing you can do is to live for today and be excited for the future and all the great things that will come because it will get so much better once you starting to deal with these kinds of problems and know that it will only get better always after a uphill there will be a downhill and everything will be easier so you just have to work yourself on up to the top and everything will kind of figure it out itself and there's so many great things you can do you can start to work out you can speak to your friends i don't say that you need to go to a therapist because it's not for everyone, you guys, and you don't actually need it if you figure out a way that will help you, like start to work out, start to eat healthy, do what you love. And if you're experiencing something that you don't like and you feel terrible, then just leave it, quit or whatever, and start to do something that you love. So that will change how your life is and it will change how you look at yourself because self esteem and self-worth is one of the most important things if you don't love yourself nobody else could really love you and if you don't feel great about things you do then people would would not think that the things you do are so great as well it all comes down to you in the end and it's only you that can change how you think it's only you that can change your life if you don't like your life how it is now. Of course, you can have friends, close friends to help you out and figure a way. But it's you that have to take the step and decide today is the day I'm going to change. Because nothing would change if you adjust, yeah, let's do it tomorrow or the day after. You have to start today, period. Just start, do what you love and life will get a lot better. 
and also if you're dealing with any kind of mental problem just know that there's so many great ways out there there are so many great books you can read that will actually help you on the way to take those small steps on turning your life around so remember don't cry about the past because the past is gone there's nothing that can change what happened you just have to deal with it accept it and move on because once you accept it the problem will get a little and little less big for each day like when i got my first panic attack i was sure that i was going to die but now that I have accepted that I have the problems, it kind of trying to get to me, but I'm thinking, no, you're not going to get to me. This is okay. I'm just going to let my heart do its own thing. I'm just going to let my body do its own thing because I will not let it break me. That is one great thing to feel a little bit better, to decide that this will not break me. I'm so much stronger. I will get through it and nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop me from being happy. And also don't stress about the future. I have done that a lot. I've been like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do now? This has made me quit school. I don't know what to do. I will not get a job because I can't because of my anxiety and all that that stuff but don't stress about your future the future will come just take one step at a time and live day by day and do the best out of the day as you possibly can it will get better each day day by day if you do the right things and you focus on the positive things in your life and not trying to stress over the negative stuff so live in the present and make it beautiful and do your thing and be happy and enjoy the small things in life. And don't try to focus too much on the negative stuff or on the big stuff. Just if someone invites you to coffee, be happy and appreciate that they ask you to come out for coffee and try to do your best. Like don't lay down in your bed and feel sorry for yourself because that would not work you will only bury yourself more down and so the best tip is to get up get dressed and maybe put on some makeup your favorite pair of shoes or anything that makes you feel great and just try to get through the day and I will also leave some links to some great books down below that you can read which focus on how to think and on how to deal with these kinds of things and how to change your state of mind. So if you're interested then be sure to check out the down bar. So don't forget to check out my social media so you can contact me wherever you want i'm always here for you guys so if you feel sad or if you feel like there's something you want to talk about or there's something you want to ask me and you don't want to ask in the comments down below then feel free to send me an email or send me a snap or whatever i'm always here to talk with you and i'm so happy that i have this chance to be on youtube and do these things that I love because it keeps me going, it keeps me motivated and it keeps me happy. So thank you so, so much to all my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and also be sure to check out my other videos and social medias. And with that being said, I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.